The town of Silent Hill has always been described in the games as being a great place to take a vacation. However, if you've ever played through any of the games before, you know that it probably isn't the best place to spend your summer break. That being said, I still uh, want to give you a guided tour of Silent Hill 3 for the PlayStation 2. The Silent Hill series has always been kind of the dark horse of survival horror games, uh, kind of moving the shadow of the Resident Evil games. It really has kind of relied on more just out and out, out creepiness rather than, you know, zombies bursting out of a locker, you know, kind of you know, surprise you scares. Silent Hill 3 certainly continues in this vein, and, and it really, it takes the PlayStation 2's hardware to places you probably haven't seen it go before to really deliver an outstanding phantasmagoria of, of horror effects. Like with any survival horror game, the game's drive really hinges upon its story. Um, and this story is perhaps a little bit different from the other Silent Hill games. Uh, the other games have been pretty much about there's a missing person and somehow your character, whether it be Harry Mason or James Sunderland, believes that you know, the missing person can be found in Silent Hill. Uh, in Silent Hill 3, you don't actually even start out in Silent Hill. In fact, you don't end up there until about halfway through the game. You play the game through the eyes of a girl named Heather. And you start out the game in, uh, in a dream sequence in just a horrific uh, amusement park. You know, that you see, you know, decapitated, you know, bunny mascots lying all over the ground. The ground is all graded and rusted and there's monsters everywhere. And, you know, the, the amusement park has fallen into a great state of disrepair. Um, if you played through the first Silent Hill, it will closer resemble the, one, the amusement park that you spent some time in towards the end of that game. When Heather wakes up from her dream, she finds herself in a restaurant in a local mall, um, though the mall is almost completely deserted. She's approached by Douglas, a detective, who asks her for a moment at a time and makes mention about how he has important information about her birth. She declines his offer and, and makes an escape from him. As Heather makes her escape from the mall, she starts running into monsters and you know, starts running into puzzles that, that she will need to solve. And uh, eventually, um, she runs into a woman named Claudia. Claudia is a, this kind of priestess woman who seems really fanatical about some sort of religion, uh, about bringing some god uh, back to life, and, and she needs Heather to help her with this, regardless of whether or not Heather actually wants to help her. Eventually, the mall changes into its Dark World equivalent, uh, which is kind of something that's been going in the Silent Hill series for a long time. Um, you know, you, the environments look really dirty. You start seeing, you know, corpses everywhere. Um, and that's where the game's, you know, really creepy atmosphere um, really starts to come out. Not to give too much of the story away, um, you'll actually be experiencing a lot of different environments in Silent Hill 3 than you have before. As I said, you start out in a mall, um, which is something that hasn't been seen before. In other environments, you'll be seeing is a subway, or a subway station, um, which is where the game actually uh, finally, you know, kind of comes out and, and pays honest respect to uh, what a lot of people know has been one of the main ins inspirations for the Silent Hill games, which is the film um, Jacob's Ladder. In fact, there's a direct reference in the uh, subway station where, uh, in the movie, um, the character Jacob Singer uh, needs to get to the, uh, the Bergen Street platform to get home. And in fact, uh, Heather needs to also get to the Bergen Street platform to, to get to her home. You'll also come across environments such as uh, an office building, um, the subway itself, and, uh, and it isn't until you get through all those areas that you finally get yourself back into, uh, back into good old Silent Hill. And uh, from there you'll recognize a couple of places that you've probably been there, been through before, such as the Heaven's Night uh, nightclub and the Brookhaven Hospital. And also, of course, eventually you make it back to the amusement park that you first saw in the, in the first dream sequence. Heather's going to run into a number of different characters in your journey. Um, of course, there's, there's Heather herself. Uh, she's this young girl. She's about 17 years old. Um, not much is really known about her past. And in fact, that's much of what the story is about is her past is a mystery even unto herself and she's really kind of trying to discover you know what what has happened what she doesn't remember and what uh, things are different from what her father has told her about her past of course it wouldn't be much of a Silent Hill game if it didn't have monsters and uh, Silent Hill 3 certainly delivers a, a, a really wide variety there's you know like zombie dogs and huge walking humanoids with huge fists that you know, try to punch at you as you run by you might find yourself in this game because there's a much larger number of monsters and a lot of them are considerably tougher that you'll find yourself more 
trying to get past them rather than trying to kill them all because otherwise you'll find yourself running short on, on ammunition and other health supplies. In Silent Hill 3 they've also decided to bring back the boss encounters and there's roughly about four or five of those throughout the game. And of course if you're going to have monsters you're also going to have to have something to fight them off with. In Silent Hill 3 you get your familiar array of both melee and firearm weapons to, uh, to fight them off with. You start out with a pocket knife and soon later pick up a handgun. As far as other melee weapons, you'll, you'll also pick up a, a large pipe that you can use to, to fight off the enemies with, a katana, uh, a maul, which is a large spiked club that Heather has a really hard time wielding, but it does a huge amount of damage, and also a stun gun. As for firearms, Heather also finds a classic shotgun, and also a submachine gun, which is really useful as, against the monsters, as you would probably guess. But unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot of ammunition for it, so you have to use it really sparingly. As is classic with the Silent Hill games, there's a tremendous amount of replay, both in the different endings, which are affected by your performance through the game. Uh, whether you make different decisions in the game, whether you, uh, how you interact with certain items, uh, and things like that. Uh, in addition, there's an incredible amount of unlockables. Um, different things you'll attain from different weapons. Um, depending on your performance through the game, if you have a preference towards melee weapons versus firearms. Um, different things you do in the game will, will affect your ending and, and will give you different benefits uh, your second time around. Um, there's a, about 20 different outfits um, that you can unlock for Heather to wear, um, and there's a whole lot of different things to, to try out and experience if you really want to look through the game and spend a whole lot of time on it. Silent Hill 3 also makes reference to a lot of the uh, previous games. Um, and you'll see, you'll see environments that you've been to before, both in Silent Hill 1 and 2. Um, and also, it's worthwhile if you have a Silent Hill 2 save on your memory card if you've played through the game. There's a couple different scenes that are triggered when the game detects a Silent Hill 2 save on your memory card. All in all, Silent Hill 3 really kind of serves as kind of a wrapping up of the, uh, the previous Silent Hill 2 games. Uh, it plays a lot of reference back to the original two games, as well as some of the... Uh, some of the inspirational sources that it came from, um, but also in its own right um, delivers a really solid and outstanding experience. Some of the horror elements uh, that are seen in this game are some of the most amazing that you've seen in any of these uh, series before, and the story is, is good and driving and keeps you along pretty well. The puzzles in the game present a pretty outstanding challenge, but thankfully if you get really stuck, um, the game has been out in both Europe and Japan for a while, and so you can uh, be sure to check out our hints if you get stuck, because there's a, a whole wealth of information out there, not only, in, not only for how to get through the game, but how to find specific items your second time through. So I hope this has been a helpful look at what you can expect to both see and do in Silent Hill 3 for the PlayStation 2. Thanks for watching.